All right, so moving on to x and y intercepts. For each graph, state the x and y intercepts and find them algebraically. So looking at this, we have um, 2 and 4 for our x intercepts. And then for our y intercept, we have 4. So in order to find these algebraically, if we want to find x, we plug in 0 for y. And if we want to find y, we have to plug in 0 for x. So down here, I'm going to go ahead and plug in 0 for y. I'm going to put 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2. We're going to move this 2 over, just like any sort of algebra problem that you've done in the past. 2 is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3. Then we're going to divide by that 2. And we're left with 1 is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. But we're also going to write negative 1 is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3 because x could be positive or negative. Even though there's absolute value um, because of that, x could be negative, x could be positive. It, because of the absolute value, it would still end up solving to be the same. So basically what that's going to look like is 1 is equal to x minus 3 and negative 1 is equal to x minus 3. So we will add this 3 add this 3. That is why we get 4 is equal to x. And add this 3, add this 3. Why we get 2 is equal to x, and that's why we have two x values. All right. Now the other part is to plug in 0. 2 times the absolute value of 0 minus 3 as x minus 2 and solve for y. So then we get 2 times the absolute value of negative 3 minus 2. This becomes 3 times 2, which is 6 minus 2. That means that y is equal to 4. All right, and that is how we solve algebraically. Sorry about that. If you couldn't see it, I didn't even realize that it cut off. All right, so I'm going to try to zoom out just a little bit, give you guys a little bit more view. Perfect. Okay, um, on to the next one. So same thing here. Um, it's kind of hard to see. Looks like this one maybe is like negative one and a half. It's sort of in between two. And then here it looks to be probably about three on the y. So let's double check. So to find y, we're going to plug in zero for x. So we have one over zero plus one, which is just one plus two. That means y is equal to one plus two, and that means y is equal to three. Perfect. All right, now on to finding our x. We're going to plug in 0 for y, and we're left with 1 over x plus 1 plus 2. And we're going to move that 2 over, minus 2, minus 2. So now negative 2 is equal to 1 over x plus 1. Okay, and then from here, I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator, which is x plus 1 times x plus 1. And that, if I distribute, would be negative 2x minus 2 is equal to 1. And I move over the 2. Negative 2x is equal to 3. And divide by negative 2, we have x is equal to negative 3 over 2, which is about halfway through, that is exactly halfway through. So it's negative one and a half, which is negative three over two. Okay, on to more. Finding algebraically, there is no graph. So we are basically just doing exactly what we did, but without a graph. All right, so um, starting with finding x. So we're gonna put zero is equal to x squared minus four x plus four. Um, this is also the same as x minus 2, x minus 2, which is x minus 2 squared. So then x is going to be equal to 2, which means that it is 2 comma 0. All right, on to the y. So we're going to plug in 0 for x. So we're left with 0 squared, which is 0, minus 4 times 0, which is 0, plus 4. 0 minus 0 plus 4. That's going to give us 4 as our y, 0 comma 4. All right, so if you were to plug this into your calculator or onto Desmos, these should be um, the x and y intercepts that you would see on the graph. Um, on to the next one. So 0 is equal to the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 2. 
All right, that means negative two is equal to the absolute value of x minus one. And as you see, we have a negative value is equal to the absolute value of something. That means that it does not exist. We can't have a negative absolute value because the absolute value makes everything positive. So there, this in no way could be true, right? There is no, um, there's no way that an absolute value can equal negative two. So it'd always be positive two. So this doesn't exist. There is no x-intercepts. All right, on to plugging in zero for x. So we have absolute value of negative one plus two, that means one plus two, y is equal to three. So zero comma three is um, the only intercept that that graph would have. And on to the last one here. Same thing, so we have zero is equal to the square root of x minus two, we square those. We have zero is equal to x minus two, plus two, plus two, two is equal to x, perfect. And my light just went off, so give me a second. I'm going to turn it back on. Oh, there we go. All right, and then on to the y values. So we're going to plug in 0 for x. So we have y is equal to the square root of 0 minus 2, which means that y is equal to the square root of negative 2, which, again, we cannot take the square root of a negative number. So this one as well does not exist. There is no y-intercept. All right. We're going to do these two examples, and then I'm going to stop the video. That way we can start the next video on just a separate, we'll start symmetry on, a next, on the next video. So finding the zeros of each, finding zeros of a function is like finding x-intercepts and are also called roots and solutions. To find the zeros of a function, you set the function equal to zero and solve for the independent variables. All right, so we're going to have zero is equal to 2x squared plus x minus 15. Um, so we are going to factor this one. So we have, let's see negative 30 with a difference of 1 that'll be 6 and negative 5 and so because of that we're gonna have 2x minus 5 and x plus and it's gonna be 3 instead of 6 all right um, I've seen a lot of kids struggle with factoring when a polynomial begins the 2x so because we still multiply the 2 times negative 15 to get negative 30 and then we find two numbers in which you add them together they have a difference of whatever's in the middle which is 1 so we use 6 and negative 5 because it's a positive one and the difference between 6 and negative 5 is positive 1. So we're going to use negative 5 here, but we have to use 3 instead of 6 because when I take 2x and I multiply it by 3, it will become 6. All right, so that's only something you have to worry about when you start with a 2x or a 3x or whatever the case may be. All right, so now we can look at these separately as 0 is equal to 2x minus 5 and 0 is equal to x plus 3. Then we have 5 is equal to 2x. We divide by 2. x is equal to 5 over 2. All right. And then we have negative 3 is equal to x. All right. Last one before we stop here. And again, we're setting this equal to 0. 2t plus 1. We're going to square both sides. 0 squared is just 0. So we're going to be, have 0 is equal to 2t plus 1. We're going to subtract that 1. We're left with negative 1 is equal to 2t divided by 2. t is equal to negative 1 half. All right, and we're going to stop this video here, and I'll pick up symmetry on the next one.